Welcome back everyone, this is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and this is your C programming tutorial series. Now we are going to start covering the basics of C. Now we already did the Hello World program and I discussed functions and all that good stuff, but now I want to teach you how to learn to write your own programs. So I highly recommend you get the general structure of the Hello World program figured out, almost to the point where you can write it yourself. It's okay if you have to reference some, but you want to understand the general format of how to write a program. I don't think you have to sit there with note cards memorizing every single thing because honestly that's going to come with time. Just have a rough idea of where to put what and where semicolons go. In this video, the very first thing I'm going to talk about is spacing. So where do you put spaces in C? So to get started, I'm just going to create a file. Um, we'll just name it subscribe.c. <laughs> And let's just start with the basic format. So you want to get into the habit of writing this out every time you write a program. Now you can see I put some spaces in here. There's a space here, there's a tab over here. And like, how do you know where you put those things? Well, fortunately for us, C is a space insensitive language. What that means is we can put space wherever we want. <laughs> that means I could just the same write this like this or like this, or like this, or like this, <laughs> and it's all going to work exactly the same. Just to prove it, I'm going to exit out of this and we'll compile this. And you can see there's no compilation errors. Let's go back into our code. And you might be wondering, well, if you don't have to put spaces, why did I choose to put spaces? So let's kind of format this back to how I had it. We can go into insert mode by pressing I. Let me just kind of clean this up, you know. The reason I formatted this is for clarity. I put a distinct separation between the includes and our first function right here. Additionally, inside of these curly braces is a code block. And by convention, we indent everything in this code block. So if I was to add another line in here, I would also indent that like this. That way there is a clear visual presentation that both of these lines are part of this code block. So now we know how to format things, but how do we actually go about coding things? Well, the very first thing I wanted to introduce to you when it comes to coding is variables. A variable is something that can store some data that can be used later on in our program. So inside of here, we can create a variable by typing int x. Now, the x is just the name of the variable. You can name it whatever you want. That would work just fine. There are some conventions here though. For example, I lowercase the first letter and I uppercase each of the other letters. If you're just doing a single variable like int x, I would leave it lowercase. This statement right here is called a variable declaration. We are saying, hey, there is a variable called x. We are declaring that the variable exists. How exactly though does the variable store a value? You know, like what use is a variable if it doesn't store anything? To give the variable a value, we need the variable initialization. So to do that, all we gotta do is go down to the next line and say x equals five or whatever value you want to give it. The only thing is it has to be an integer value because up here we said int. So an integer is a whole number. Think one, two, three, four, negative five, 23, anything without any decimal points. Now, a very important word that you need to know when it comes to computer programming is syntax. Syntax is the form or format, like where do we put semicolons? Where do we put equal signs? And where do we put all those other fancy symbols and stuff? All of those rules are called the syntax. And you will become more familiar with the C syntax as you start programming in C. Now that I have this variable x, let's talk about using this variable. First, let me get rid of this garbage. And then up here, we are going to do some math. I know you guys probably love math. Most people do. <laughs> so we can just create a new variable and say int y equals x divided by 2. Anytime you see an x in our code, like right here, you can think of the value 5 going and replacing that x. So it's 5 divided by 2. So y is going to equal half of 5. So let's go through an example with some simpler math. x equals 10. <laughs> 10 divided by 2 
is obviously 5. So if you were asked, what is the value of y? Well, you could say 5. The value of y is not x divided by 2. It is not that. That's because the value of x is replaced here, and then the division happens, and then it gets assigned to the variable y. So the variable y only contains one thing, and the thing it contains is an integer, as you can see right here. Now you may have noticed that instead of using x here, we could have just put a 10. So I could just put 10 divided by 2, and y would equal the same exact thing. So why would you ever want to use a variable like that? Well, if we are using the variable x, you know, 10 or 20 times in our program, we're not going to want to have to repeat the same value over and over and over again. Instead, we could give x a value like 10, and then just replace those values with the variable. Other times, we might get the value of x from a database or from a user, and we might not know ahead of time. So we can't go in here and type in the value of x, because we don't know the value of x. So it's always best to use variables when either of those situations come up. The last thing I wanted to teach you in this video is the concept of an expression. An expression is anything that can be evaluated, and the result is going to be one value. So down here we have an example of an expression, x divided by 2. That expression evaluates to one value, which is 5. Then we have the value 5 inside of a bigger statement. So to summarize, the keywords we need to know are expression, statement, declaration, and initialization. Up here you can see that we declared the variable and then we initialized the variable with a value. Down here we're actually doing both steps in one line. We're declaring the variable y and then we're giving it some value, 5. In the next video we are going to be talking about how to get this to print to the console using printf. Hopefully everything so far makes sense to you guys and that you're keeping up if you have any questions, please be sure to leave a comment. Either I or some of the other viewers will be able to help you. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.